Alrighty, to get started, we're going to give you three tips to make better griddled chicken breast. Mr. Tim sent an email recently, and just to let you know, Mr. Tim, you're not alone. It is highly asked about, whether it be email or comments, how do we up our chicken game? How do we make better chicken on the griddle? Because of the same two reasons you mentioned. We're either getting dry and overcooked chicken or we're getting raw chicken. So today is all about helping you guys up your griddle grain with chicken. Standard grocery store bought chicken. There are some things to go over, so I'm gonna try to do this very quickly so we don't bore you. The idea of chicken breast is very simple. Chicken breasts are just too dang thick for a griddle, okay? We can get to the size later. I would say traditionally, this is not a knock on you if you do it. The number one most sought off sought after item to marinate chicken is probably an Italian style dressing. We're going to show you the pros and cons of this. You can substitute any idea out there you want to. The idea starts with this. So any yogurt based sauce, um, any store bought or handmade dressings to marinate chicken are going to produce pretty similar results. So since this is number one, we're going to use this. Sticking to the same theme about how to season your chicken, it doesn't matter if it's my seasonings or not. Some seasonings are gonna have sugars in them. Some seasonings are gonna have garlic in them. You've gotta be very careful when using a thick cut of meat, especially on the griddle, of what type of seasoning you're using and when you actually season. Moving along, the thickness of the chicken breast. If you're taking a whole chicken breast like this and trying to cook it on the griddle, it takes forever. So let me try to paint you a picture. Most griddle is gonna run anywhere between 375 and 550, okay? Doesn't matter what temperature you have it on, those are your common, uh, anywhere between there. The problem is with the chicken breast being so thick that the outside is gonna overcook before the inside has a chance to cook. Chicken naturally takes longer to cook than any meat out there. Poultry in general, turkey goes a little bit longer. If you think about your beef, we cook a lot of beef on the channel. If you want a medium rare, you're looking like 125 to 135. Let's up the game to pork. Pork is typically 140 to 145. Chicken's about 165 degrees, and that's very high on the scale compared to the others, okay? That means it stays on the griddle a lot longer. So I would say this is probably common mistake number one, okay? So let's just kind of mirror that idea. Simply enough, we're gonna take this whole chicken breast, add the Italian dressing. Remember, even if it's not Italian dressing, it could be something else. Put it in there, set it aside while we work on other things. And the reason why we're doing this, I'm just gonna give you like a time frame of how long it takes to cook a whole chicken breast on the griddle, okay? Now I'm gonna prep one the way we recommend, okay? So there's really two trains of thoughts. You could take a whole chicken breast if you want to. You can take a Ziploc bag. You can oil the bag on the inside. You can take a meat mallet or a pounder and you could pound that son of a gun out. But the problem is you're gonna have a massive piece of meat. One solution to do that is either cut your chicken in half or you can cut it in manageable pieces. The most important thing is to get your chicken even because that does two things. One, if you get your chicken even, it's going to be a lot thinner because you're going to have to thin it out to make your tail versus your uh, breast up here. Okay. The second thing is, is you get more surface area so it cooks faster. So it's not on the griddle as long. So you don't have to worry about overcooking the top before the inside gets cooked. Okay. So if you're using the whole chicken breast here, you see how thick that is versus how thin that is? So that's what you're going for. That's kind of like your guiding light. Start about right here. Trim some of that crap off. And you're just eyeballing it. No wrong. You're not going to hurt anything, but you're just trying to make that even. Look how the knife just naturally cuts down. See that? And open that up. You can even open that up a little bit more if you wanted to. Okay. Same thing over here. Now, if you wanted to, you can trim that off. And right there is pretty even, okay? So you can season this up. You can pound it out thinner if you wanted to. You can still put it in the plastic bag and this is right here is how you make juicy chicken, okay? All the chickens wanna cook evenly and it can handle a little bit more seasoning because you have more surface area. This one, we're actually gonna put on the marinade so I can show you what a moist or wet marinade does to the griddle versus a dry, because that's important because you're talking about juicy chicken. 
We have the piece of chicken in there. I'm just gonna add some oil. And then we're gonna pound this out as well. And that's what you should have. A lot more even piece of chicken. And that should be good to go for the griddle. To the chicken breast, we're gonna add salt, pepper, garlic, and butter. Kind of like the four big ingredients in this uh, seasoning concoction. And we're just gonna lightly coat it all the way around, flip it over. Remember, this has that oil in it from the um, uh, little Ziploc bag. The chicken breast is gonna take a barbecue seasoning. It does have a little sugar in there, so I'm able to show you the results of that. And obviously you could use salt and pepper if you wanted to. All right, we're roughly about 400 degrees across the board. That's a good temperature to start with. What I'm gonna do is cook the whole chicken breast marinated in the Italian dressing first. And we're gonna start the time frame, and the time frame is 3.02, okay? I'm gonna show you how long it takes to cook a full chicken breast. We're here, we can start working over here. A little bit of oil down. And then right here, we're also gonna place that pounded out, marinated chicken breast as well. Cause I wanna show you the difference. The last piece of advice I can give you to make fantastic juicy chicken on a griddle. Even if you think all the other ideas I gave you was crap and you don't wanna follow those. Our ultimate goal together would be the internal temp. If chicken is supposed to be 165, the easiest way to get there is an instant read thermometer. It's not going to matter what brand. You pick a brand that you like. I've used ThermPro for the last, before uh, social media, before I was even on social media. Uh, we have a chef tip here that I swear by. Uh, but the most important thing I can tell you is the internal temp of chicken, okay? If you want a juicy chicken, if your chicken's at 180, you've already shot past it. Typically on the griddle, you're, tip, you're dealing with high heat, okay? High heat means anywhere about 375 or 400 and above. The more energy, the more heat something has, the more carryover it's gonna have. So if you can imagine cooking something in the oven at 250, you can take it out and you're not really worried about that degrees bump in temperature because it's gonna keep rising. We hear that all the time. On a griddle, you will rise in temperature because there is so much surface heat going on that your product is pretty, like, I mean, it's, it's extremely high heat. So this is important. You might want to stop a few degrees lower than 165, maybe 160. Start checking it, take it off, and see how much it rises. You're going to need to cut them to your griddle. Your thickness of chicken is always going to vary. So we're going to clip it right here because I know it's calm. And I just want to show you what happened. See that? This is kind of what I'm talking about. This is on purpose. My barbecue seasoning has sugars in it, okay? You're dealing with a 400 plus degree uh, area. That means your chicken's, I mean, I would, I don't think it's burnt, but that's way, I would not want it like that. You gotta be careful about what kind of seasoning you're using and when to season. This right here, the Italian marinade, same thing. A lot of marinades have sugars in them. You can see that we place them on the griddle at the same time. That looks like a lot better color. You gotta be careful with your garlic. So. I'm doing this on purpose to show you that to create juicy, fantastic chicken, there is some thought behind it. This is the most common thing I see on the griddle group with people taking pictures and so forth. The last tip about this, and then I think we're downhill from here. You need to poke around a couple different places on your chicken. If you notice, this might be a hair thicker. 
So if you have a thinner part versus a thinner part, you need to check those because all your chicken needs to be 165. time frame we just pulled our third one off that was the marinated one i kind of feel like anytime you use a wet marinade it zaps the temperature of the griddle down drastically which this kind of proves my point that i've been having on the background as much as we cook i've noticed that um when you use a dry seasoning it doesn't necessarily spread as much uh so just kind of like tip for tip for tap right so these were pulled almost within like 10 minutes and this took about 15 minutes to cook okay our chicken breast I've just been flipping it back and forth. I've lowered the grill down to low. Just to give you an idea. It's still 120 or 130 degrees, which means it's still got another 30 to 35 degrees to go. That's why you're creating the bad, uh, the dry chicken, okay? Let me show you. Over here on this tail, you're 184 degrees. That means the outside of this chicken from here, there, is already cooked 20 degrees past what you're supposed to. And this part of the chicken is 40 degrees, 30, 30 degrees less than what it's supposed to. So that's how you're creating dry chicken. Plus, we mentioned this earlier, there is so much intense heat that you're creating like a band. You guys know when you get like a ribeye or a filet, and the outside looks extremely brown and the inside like a like a, a light pink. That's because it took so much heat to get there. It wasn't like a warmed up slowly. That's what's happening. The outside of this chicken, you can see, is drying out already. And it's overcooking the outside before the inside has a chance to cook. So let's recap really quick. Number one, how you decide to season your chicken is completely up to you. Be careful with your marinades. Um, they tend to burn on the griddle because the liquid is, was spread out. Uh, and I think it takes a little bit longer to cook. If you're using a dry season, be careful about your sugars in the seasoning. We intentionally did this. I wanted you to see what happens when you have a, a seasoning with a little bit of sugar in it, okay? This one had to shake that. Garlic can burn as well, but you see the differences. It took about five minutes longer for roughly the same size of piece of chicken to cook with a marinade than it did the seasoning. Whole piece of chicken on the griddle is kind of like, I mean, it's still rocking and rolling. I bet it's not even 135 degrees yet. But I want to give you a time stamp before we get off here. Last but not least, letting your chicken rest. Letting any type of meat rest that comes off the griddle, you need to let it rest roughly five to 10 minutes because that calms the chicken down. As it calms down, there's less pressure inside the chicken. So when you cut into it, you're not losing all the juices. 20 minutes later, and that chicken is still cooking. So 10 minutes, roughly 15 minutes, and that's on the 20 minute mark. We let it rest, and I just want to show you really quickly. You see the juices on the board? That's from letting it rest. That's good. See the juice inside the chicken? Not being on the griddle as long. Amen. <laughs> Mm. 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 Dang, that's good. Kind of like the same idea. See how juicy that chicken is? The ability to cook your chicken a lot faster, thinner, and to the right temperature really, really, really matters. That one tastes a little bland with the Italian dressing, I gotta be honest. <laughs> Why do people do that? <laughs> Instead of just completely blitzing the black side, I just had it resting up against the griddle like this because this is really where the fat part is. So, time stamp 25 minutes to cook a whole chicken breast. We are going to let it rest because that's what you're supposed to do, but I wanna show you, my guess is it won't be as juicy.
juicy chicken breast. On the fat side. Yes. And that's all because of internal temperature. But you get down here, and this is how you have dry chicken breast. Okay? So that's the trade-off. Can you cook juicy chicken breast when it's whole? You absolutely can. But you're really running the risk of one part gets overcooked, one part gets undercooked. And vice versa. You guys go from there. Second of all, more importantly, it's on the griddle for so long that the outside band, whether you use Italian seasoning or a dry seasoning or whatever, just gets absolutely blitzed because it's just on there too long. Okay. Oh, ugh. <laughs> you can actually feel it in your mouth. Yeah, you. Yeah. You're honest. Okay. Oh yeah, that is not near as good as the others. So there it is. You guys asked. We try to answer, and that's what it's all about. It's a community, so thank you guys so much for pushing us. Find us on Instagram. Find us on Facebook. Uh, if you're a member, thank you so much for the ride. Thank you so much for the support. If you have not done that yet, check that out. It's a join button down below. It's a membership program. We thank each and every one of you for taking time for doing so. Last but not least, thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button. Pound the notification button. Share it with your friends. Peace. Ugh. <laughs> it is amazing. That wouldn't taste so rubbery. Don't be a spitter. You ain't spitting it back out. <laughs> We're not going to eat that. No. That tastes rubbery.